Hey guys, um, quick little announcement real quick before we get started with this video. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you now. I went in, in a lot in this episode and your girl gets very angry, um, by the end of 48. It, it's just, this is a long behind video, a very long behind video. Um, <laughs> Mm, what else should I say about this? It, it's just, oh God, it, it's just a lot of pent up energy from the last like overall year with this show. So, um, yeah, enjoy it because your girl, like I said, I went in and honestly, I don't regret anything. I really don't. It's just because as I said in this video, I, I have a really not so nice, um, good taste in my mouth about how certain characters um, did certain things and then other stuff and the representation of some of these girls and a lot of other things. I, <laughs> I am a little mean, but that is me as a critiquer and stuff. So if you get mad about me talking ish about your character... That's okay. That is fine. If you want to, yeah, you can go ahead and talk into the comments about it. If you don't, that's okay. You can go on Twitter and rash about it. I really don't care because it's me as a critiquer and it's me saying my own opinion. We all got opinions on how we feel about this story overall and how they did certain things. Not everybody's going to agree with what I said. Some people will, some people won't. And that is okay. I am 100% sure fine with it. One thing you ain't gonna do is cuss me out. Whether it's on here or whether it's on Twitter. Because I don't feel like starting a world war whatever with some people. So, yeah. Go ahead and enjoy the video and I will see you guys all next time. Hey guys, it's Queen DJ and in today's video, I will be reacting during two episodes 47 and 48 of Star Trek Pretty Care. Even though... I, do I want to put finale on this? Kind of not really, but in a way because this is the last two episodes of the main story of this show before, you know, Aoyuki comes in next week and, you know, pushes the other girls away and, you know, declares her stardom of the newest star in this pretty cute universe. But, I mean, yeah, this does feel like the finale, even though next week is really, truly the finale. It just... It, it's just me and how a lot of people kind of told me like oh yeah consider this a finale because this is that and the third i honestly um don't know what to expect I, i'm thinking a lot of you are probably wondering why the hell i waited until now to go ahead and record 47 48 i i was gonna do 47 a couple of days ago and just release it but i was like no 48 is coming out this weekend let me just go ahead and do it now because i'd rather do it two episodes together one last time and then just do one episode by itself but I mean, I'm hoping with both of these episodes, they do all these characters justice. This is like the final thoughts that I'll be getting on all of these girls, plus this show, even though, like I said, the show technically runs next week, but I'm doing it a week early because we're going to be talking about it because I am a little bit heated with this show. And some of y'all have been waiting. <laughs> for me to go batshit crazy on this show and it, it might happen we i really don't know it's just gonna we're gonna see how it plays out with these last two episodes but other than that let's go ahead and get started with episode 47 in three two one go <sighs> that's too bad <laughs> They're probably at the ends of the earth, you know, something like Sailor Moon type ish. There you go. <laughs> oh, 
opening. Okay. So here's my little critique already right now. Why can't we just have one episode, one god dang episode? And I'm not saying this to be rude. And I think I said this the last time. You don't always need the opening. Just continue with the freaking action. There's no freaking reason to go ahead and put the opening in. I mean, okay. I get it. But like, okay, come on. Especially with the fact that this show is ending next week. Even though 48 is going to seem like this last episode. But with the last three episodes, one of them, I'm okay with 47, but maybe even 48 or 49 should at least not have an opening. It's just, it should be, continue it, don't worry about the god dang opening. Love the opening, I always have it, I always will, but sometimes, typically with any other show that I've seen, and usually when it's the last few episodes, they don't like to show the opening. Just continue it without giving me a little break, but I get it. That's my little rant for the first few minutes of the episode. That's all. I'm here. Oh my god, you heavy puppy. So, you know, I'm just going to call her Green Burrow for, like, the rest of the episode, right? And that's okay. Mm. It is so weird to know that the naturators are people. But it's still interesting at the same time. Like, the biggest shocker, because the whole entire time with this series, I immediately thought that they were just robots and nothing else. It's okay. Oh. Well, I mean, as someone said last week, they are the true villains of Pretty Care. I'm just saying, in my opinion. Because who the hell hides a secret that big for that damn long? I'm just saying. You would show my freaking... My, the fucking Libra. Why would you... See, I love the fact that they're representing me, but still, that's a bad place when I'm talking mad heat about these characters. You could have shown any one of them, but you had to show a, a Libra. You had to do October like that. Thank you. And you, little cutie, you'll be evil.
we also going to talk about the voice acting thing that I talked about a while back ago, too. So, just know. Girl got a lot to talk about in these last two episodes. It's a rice ball. Yeah, also, a peace offering, basically. You can't just have water. You gotta drink something. I mean, eat something. Oh my god, it's Sunday. I'm sorry. Go on. Good, ain't it? God, now see that is so weird to see now. Mm -hmm. Oh, transformation one last time. Honestly, well, no, they're gonna do it in the final episode as well, the true final one. So it, it just seems like because of this final battle, yeah, it's just last transformation, last time to be OP as heck, ish like that. The last time we'll possibly be hearing these songs and It just looks like a big cross.
Is it a weird feeling that I feel like this battle is not going to be as hype that I think it is? I feel like they're going to over-exaggerate it and over-extend it. Because, I mean, <laughs> 47 and 48 is going to be a two-parter episode with this. Technically, no, it's going to be a three-parter because it started last week with 46. And now we have 47 and we're continuing in 48. Oh, damn, AI. Hey, Yeah, you guys go on ahead. No. Ooh, haven't seen that move in a long behind time. Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. Nope, I'm calling bullshit on that. That was too fucking easy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's too easy. What else have you come hiding from these princesses, girls? Like shit. Uh, you know what? I just fucked it up again. What have you been hiding from these girls, princesses? I I'm sorry. It's Sunday. I am tired. <laughs>
And that's when you're, yeah, your negative energy. Of course, girl, that's, <laughs> that's how many to one you think you're going to be able to <laughs> Not at that time. Not at that point, baby. You would have had to wait until you got OP with darkness up in your behind. Of course. And that vessel will be full of. Well, God, are you serious? I don't know if you can tell right now, but I'm even more heated than I was at the beginning of this fucking episode. We ain't even done. Is in you. That too. Pretty sure. What the fuck? Mm -mm. Oh, let me not. Let me not. Let me not. Let me not. Because I'm a. Oh, God. I'm getting way too fucking heated. I'm trying to calm my ass down right now. And you just gonna stay in there. Nope, baby gonna sacrifice yourself. Mm -hmm. But we all know she gonna be okay. It's just, we all, I'm pissed. Mm -mm.
I'm fucking heated. <laughs> I am heated. I am livid right now. Okay. Here's one thing. We're going to go ahead and start talking about this now. This is part one, and then in this next episode is fucking part two. Number one, why the fuck are these damn princesses keep it? They kept quiet about a whole bunch of shit the whole entire time. They were like, hmm, well, we have this secret and this secret and ish about the 13. Well, yeah, there's 13 princesses, not just 12, but she's secretly a bad guy, number one. Fua is also a freaking... <laughs> Vessel, what the fuck? And then if she uses it, she ceases to exist. But are you fucking kidding me? Okay, let me just say this now. If let's go back several freaking episodes when we finally got all the freaking keys and all the twinkle imagination, if they would have opened their goddamn mouth and said something to these girls about this, none of this would have freaking happened. But because of the fact is, these are the last few episodes, because we ain't counting 49 yet, these are the last three episodes for the final battle. You gotta have all things that they couldn't be able to talk about for several goddamn episodes, all to come up in one freaking episode. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. I, I, mm -mm. Oh, God. I'm saying this. <laughs> Even though we ain't done with this show yet, we'll be done officially by next week. And the last time I said this, and this wasn't in a reaction series, this is when I was watching the series, like, by myself. There's been one other Pretty Cure show that has left in the end. Uh, there are a couple. One that I did also react to, and then any other that I have watched on, the, on, <laughs> on my own, that has left... By the time we finish the series, a very not so good taste in my mouth, and it makes me just be like, yeah, I don't really want to rewatch the show again if I ever really had the time. And with this shit, plus last week, plus with the the crap that happened in forty six, now going into forty seven, and getting ready to go into this last episode, I don't like the way I'm feeling right now. Don't like the way how I how this went. I get the fact that they, yes. Fua had to sacrifice herself. But you already freaking know she's gonna be okay. They're gonna find some weird way between these last two freaking episodes to bring her back. See, this is the type of ish that one show that I used to watch, it used to be one of my all-time favorite shows, and I'm not talking about an anime, I'm talking about an actual TV show, um, until I want to say about season three. They had two of the best freaking characters in a show that I had ever freaking seen. And then they go off and kill one of the characters because there was a lot of drama on set. And it was the last maybe five minutes of the show. And I'm sitting here like, oh my God, they're going to find out a way to bring her back. Because this show can't have just one character be the rest of the show. If the show has always started and always had been two freaking characters, or in this case, five freaking characters, and let's say, I don't know, Kirsar, or any of the other five girls, not accounting Fua, because we can't put Fua in this group for as a six, even though Fua ain't no freaking pretty girl, she's just, you know, a mascot of the show, and you have all the rest of these characters, you cannot continue a show without other characters. If you have so many other characters and you can take someone out, is that still the show anymore? No! So, I mean, oh my god, I can't. I, I just really don't like the way I'm feeling right now. Because still, we still know she's coming back no matter the fuck what. It's just how you have a whole other 20 something minute episode series and she's gonna come the f back everything is gonna be happy ending we're gonna wrap it up in a nice freaking bow but you're still going to leave a lot of unanswered questions but still we're gonna get into that the second freaking episode i have mixed feelings on this episode i i liked it but then at the same time i disliked it because they're so it, with the ish with the princesses and the fact is that they could have talked about this shit several episodes ago instead of waiting until 
48 and 47 and 46 to release all these really good juicy things. Think about freaking Hug a Toe or Kitty Kitty Pretty Care All Mode or anything. Maybe even Go Princess Pretty Care. And anything that was like that juicy or that big, it happened. It either happened while the final battle was going or maybe a couple, like that very first episode of part one for that final battle. And then the other two, we find out, yeah, Shot was eventually the big bad or someone else is the big bad. But with this, you're waiting until the second, the middle episode before going into it. Yes, I understand that Fuwa is the, you know, the biggest sacrifice. But still, just all these little secrets. You could have did it episodes ago but no you decided to wait until now it would have been so much better <sighs> oh god I'm just gonna say this things that I predicted on this show on my own not even as a reaction recording but just sitting and thinking about are slowly but surely coming true don't really like it I don't and typically like it's just like god uh I can't. I'm just, I'm just so angry right now. And I, I just, what the one thing that I'm hoping with this last episode, each girl has a reason on why they're saving the universe. And I ain't gonna go into it, but it's just each girl and their wishes on why. We know Star ultimately wants to save the universe, also because she loves and cares for it, and plus the fact that she wants to save Fua. We already know she's going to get Fua back no matter what, but you got to think about every single other girl in this series, especially freaking Uni, because at the end of the day, because I kind of forgot about this while I was having a conversation with a friend, but then I remembered it. With Uni, when we all first met Uni, Uni wanted to save her home planet, Planet Rainbow, no matter what. At the end of the day, she's going back home no matter what. The same thing with Lala and the rest of the girls are all going to go home and they're all going to go their separate ways until we find out, you know, their future thing. It's like that in this last episode. I have a really bad feeling that out of the five girls, four of them are going to get fucked up endings. And one of them... <laughs> One of them is going to get an ending that is going to piss me the hell off. I just know it. I, I'm just going to be sitting here, like, between... I, I won't even be in this room anymore, because I'll be, I'll be in my new place. I'm going to sit in my new place, watching the official last episode, and I'm just going to be sitting here, like... I, I Like, I have a feeling I'm going to end up not saying I don't accept this ending, and I'm really going to need, like, a fanfic of it. But, yeah! Go ahead and pause the video, and I'll see you guys in one second for episode 48. Okay, episode 48 in 3, 2, 1, go. Yes or no? No, 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 yes. She's gone. Of course. I mean, we saw it in the preview, but still. Now you see that? That's how you do an opening. That's the one point I'm going to give you for right now.
You can't. Oh, well, damn, this is literally the bad ending. I like dead ass. Like, oh god, visual novel up in this. Like, mm mm. Don't have Flula come back in some bullshit way. I swear to God. Oh, oh my. You telling me that's the bullshit way she go?
Okay, bitch, shut up. I know I gotta take him out. Take him out after. So are we going to see it's from like the movie now to make that officially canon with it? Maybe. Girl, she's sitting there like a badass bitch she is. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> Okay, can we just be glad that they are finally fighting with the outfits instead of just doing the twinkle star, star twinkle imagination and then that's it and then they go back to their regular outfits? I mean, you know, think about it with Mermaid Melody up in there. Like, mmm. But it would have been nice to have the dresses from the movie in here too as well, but I get that.
<laughs> it should have, but they had like a little tiny bit inside of themselves. There is something I do want to say, but I'm going to wait. That was fucking beautiful. Like, my god. Mm. I know. Let, let's not talk about what happened a couple minutes ago. Yeah, and plus the fact is you don't really deserve to be erased. She gonna leave just like... You, mm -mm. you gotta be fucking kidding me, right? No. 
not full, don't come back. Come on. I mean, if they, okay. If they're going to do what I think they're going to do, like, literally because the fact is they just killed Fua off and if they probably didn't bring her back, but they ain't going to do that. They're going to bring her back. Yeah, she might not even remember you. Mm-hmm. So that's the bullshit reason. Mm-hmm. I mean, but it's still a good reason, though. But it's still BS. So you also telling me that we couldn't go back to Planet Rainbow real quick and see, you know, Junie's people? Mm-mm. You did not just say that. Hi, honey. So y'all can go home. Mm -hmm. The palace needs to go. But we still got a lot to talk about, honey. I'm mm -mm, low heated about what you said a couple minutes ago, but yeah, well, I gotta say too. Oh, oh. I'm going to cry. I can't cry today. I already cried too much yesterday. Okay, so here are the positive things that we're going to talk about. <laughs> I need a moment real quick because, oh, God, it's a lot of stuff. I got a lot of pop. I got some positives and I got a lot of negatives about this because we're going to go ahead and do this series 
overall, because we ain't counting 49, as I said. Okay. I will honestly say, that ending, that battle, all of this episode in a nutshell, especially with the way it started and the way it ended, was a hell of a lot more better than Hagato's pretty cure ending with the final battle. Because... To me, if you if we go back to a year ago, around this time when Hagato is ending and just seeing the the hot mess with that was that fucking final battle, comparing it to this, this is a hell of a lot better than that. I mean, I will say this also for once. I mean, because typically with sometimes with this show and other Magical Girl shows that I've seen in general, I've never really cheered for the villain. If the villain had a good backstory, I'll say maybe a couple times for Sailor Moon. But learning about the 13th princess and everything, I mean, she had a reason for why she did it. And I got to cheer her on for that because there are some times when this show, and it's not just this show, Okay. It's not just this show, but several other shows in Dirty where it is the main villain or something. They make the villain very one-dimensional, one-sided. They don't give them a lot of stuff. I'm not going to say that this villain was one-dimensional. They did give her a lot of ish, but I do hate the fact that with these last three episodes or in the last few episodes that when we get <laughs> number one, finding out her backstory and ish, because this is kind of, sometimes, I wish, because Sailor Moon did this right, and this is the one thing, like, the one reason why I will literally, com possibly, maybe, for every season, compare this show to Sailor Moon, and I wish sometimes that they would do it, because, uh, do it more in the future, because they did it with all the mini villains, the mini bosses that the girls had to go through, but with this big behind villain, they waited until the end of the last few episodes to do it. Let's just say going into healing good or anything after healing good, we get a villain and early on, way before the villain pops up, well no, way before we find out the reasons of why she's doing this in a back in a black story, backflash and everything. Let's say by episode 25, around the time when the last cure, one or two, whatever, come in and we finally get to learn a little bit more backstory on our main villain, on the connection of whoever else, like, the good guys and shit like that. Like, let's say because, like, with Sailor Moon, it was because of the fact that Queen Burrow was also in love with, um, and Demian and shit like that, and she wanted to be with him, and yada yada, this is that in the third. You gotta think about the same thing with the Black Moon Kingdom, the Dark Moon Circus, and the last freaking villain, the one Galaxia, I believe that's her name. I'm not 100% sure, because it's been a long fucking time since I've seen Sailor Moon, but... Each one of those villains from that series was memorable because of their backstory. She is a very interesting character, and I kind of wish we had more to do with her. But because of the fact is, she was hiding behind a mask for such a goddamn long time, and then you wait until now. It's just like, I felt like I barely really knew anything about her. But I still valued her as a character, and the fact is that, yeah, here's all these secrets about everything that you didn't know up until now, and you looking at all the, the other 12 princesses and looking at them like, well, what the hell? Why didn't you say this several episodes ago? Why would you wait until now? And that's why a lot of people ended up saying what the, <laughs> the fuck that they said last week. The true freaking villains of Pretty Care. Them 12 princesses. And it just, oh, God, mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, that's one part. Now let's go ahead and talk about these five girls. Each one is awesome in their own special way. But we're going to go ahead and start backwards with my best girl. Even though she is my best girl, I still got some and some negatives about each and every one of these girls. But it's just, it's only because of the fact is, at the end of the day, I'm a fan of this show and I'm a critiquer. So no matter what, this is coming from a critiquer's point. I know some of y'all are going to get pissed about any girl I sit here and freaking talk about and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. You have to know at the end of the day, it is strictly just my opinion and what I think they should have done better with some of these girls. Okay, so starting with Uni, I, I love the fact that it's like, number one, she came very early on. I did love that as a big, huge difference because they did the same thing with Lulu and Emidu 
and how Gato pretty care. I do kind of hope that they do that again with um with Healing Good because with these last few series, they've kind of made them come like super duper early on, but like with they still come between like episodes twenty three to twenty five by the time we find out, oh hey, such and such is the last cure. But <laughs> the biggest but is that ish that she just said in this last episode how she is sitting here and saying i don't care don't worry about my planet honey the reason why you were in this show for as long as you were was to save your home planet planet rainbow you've been talking about that for the longest freaking time the reason why you wanted to save your home and try to getting everything back because you wanted your family back, your people back. And then you give me this with the fact is you want to say Fua. I get that. But still, to me, that that's a little cop out. I don't know what the hell the writers were thinking when they wrote this episode about saying, yeah, mm, it seems like you need to give a crap about a, a freaking planet and stuff. But we're going to go ahead and find it. This is the bullshit reason of we're getting Fua back. It still is a good reason, but then at the same time, it's a bullshit reason. And that's why. Okay, now going on to Lala. I, you know what, did I really, mm, did I really, no, mm -mm, I'm gonna wait on Lala. Let's go to Elena. Okay. So you already know my, my negatives about Elena, but the one thing, the biggest things that I loved about Elena was her smile, her energy, her positivity, like the, like, no, she's more of a dad figure of the group being able to have Cody Cody as I was saying being able to be there for the girls and such and even though there were times where you know the roles had to be reversed and someone had to be there for her but my biggest negative with, with her and I've said for a long time and you all probably know it too was that two-parter episode because to me it felt like <sighs> you did part one focus on her episode still had a little bit more to go but then you give me a quote-unquote even though it wasn't a filler but it still felt like a goddamn filler and then you're like okay here's part two that mm -mm. let's not do that and i mean i'm about to say hug to. let's not do that in healing good if you do a two-parter episode on a character, don't give me part one and then give me a filler-ass episode, even though, like I said, it wasn't filler, and then go into a part two. Put both of them in back-to-back. -back. It's going to make the character feel a lot more developed than doing what you did, essentially. Madoka's kind of the same thing in a way as Elena, but... <sighs> I don't know. She it, like she's very she's the same thing as her, but there like she still has good in her. But the biggest thing is that her issue was the situation with her dad. That was the thing I will say that was like still a positive and a negative for her because of the fact is it still was always getting behind uh, hidden behind her parents because of the fact is her parents are really her dad. Um sort of paved out her way for her and she really couldn't think for herself it's the same thing a little bit with elena and that's why they felt very similar by the end of the series lala i will say was just amazing i loved her as a character same thing with uni and the other four but I, I just don't think for lala there really wasn't anything negative for her honestly i felt no mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, there was there was, and it's only because of the last person who has to talk to, because really it's overall. Um, and let's go ahead. But yeah. All right. So little Miss Star. <laughs> okay. So if you guys did not know it, and I think some of you probably do and some of you probably don't, Star is actually my least favorite character from this show. And I know someone's going to be, like I said, <laughs> upset as fuck and wondering like oh my god she's about to trash my best girl this isn't really all about that but i get the fact that why you're mad it's okay it's fine whatever but with star to me in my opinion 
in any episode with any other girl who got that main focus. It didn't seem to me that they truly got that main focus. Why? Because most of the time, that main focus was on Star. So typically, like in an episode, let's say it was an Elena episode or uh, no, mm -mm, let me let me change that. Let's say it was a Lala episode. And something happened. In the end, he kind of got the main focus. And it just, it, you take Lala and you just like take her and you're just throwing her in the trash. This is for all four of the other girls. Overall, in this series, they, they did her a lot more. And so it makes me feel like in the end, I know this girl so freaking much. But these other four, I barely really got to know anything about them because we got so much freaking focus on her and, and that's why all these other four girls feel so one-dimensional and it feels like I'm sitting here I'm like what else can I say about these girls except the ish that they already had in their first freaking episode and then that's it why because she got the most focus it's kind of the same thing with her parents because her parents were barely in the show same thing with her grandparents but she still, even if the if, if the episode was focused on her grandparents or her parents, she still got the most focus. And it's like, I sometimes I'm like, you need to kind of put her on a step back. It's not always about her. You need to put characters who are the secondary characters, even the pretty girl, they need to come up. There are so many other shows out here till today that do so much better on a character development and it's like oh my god it's like every single time when it happens we take two steps forwards and then several steps back when you have an episode on somebody else so i get the fact you have to freaking understand why it's just i i, I can't with her sometimes and it was just like what else do i say about her and then it, it was like, and I have to agree with this, especially I think Capardo said this, that she is just her sing, twin cool. That's really, no matter what, you always hear that. Because at the beginning, I loved her sing. By the time of now, it was just so annoying. I mean, each and every girl who is a pink cure has a sing. And it's just like, to me, this sing, as I said, interesting at the end. By the time we got to the end of the series, I was just like, I really, that's all she is to me. That's all I see and hear when I look at her as a character. And it's just like she has all this other things. But it's because of the fact that she got oversaturated in development. And it's just like, why? Why? That's all I want to freaking know is why. You have to, if you are getting a care, if you're getting people, especially with Elena. Elena had a freaking background. She was not only Japanese. She was Mexican. And I wish what they did with this show is they did a little bit more on that. You did, you gave me like, what, how many episodes on her ethnicity and her background with her family and stuff? Maybe like under five? <laughs> if you've seen the show, any show, where a character is from a different country and they still speak Japanese and they have two different nationalities, they give them equal stuff. Not only Japanese, but let's say they're Mexican, they're they're um they're British, they're from America, whatever. They still give them and they have like everyone else learn about the country and stuff. But with this, it was just like you took it. And you, you took it and you were just like this. And you were like, yeah, let's just scrap that idea about that. That's not really important. It was important. We are now in the modern age where little girls who watch this show or girls my age who are watching this show and they're seeing themselves on television. And it's like you have a character who was amazing interesting on paper and you just didn't know what to do with her and that pisses me off you can take someone on like any other tv show i'm trying not to cry and make them so well developed and you have a little girl who possibly watches the show and you're like oh my god like this is someone who is who looks like me who sounds like me imagine a little girl watching this i'm starting to cry 
about, like, when you were a kid and you're watching a cartoon or a TV show or whatever and you, like, feel a certain type of way or a connection towards a character and they get you. And I just feel like the representation on Elena was just so far-fetched. And it's like, why? Like, you could have done so much for her. But you didn't. And I hate that. And it's just like, oh my god, because she was like one of like besides Uni and Lala, were like they, she was one of the most god interesting characters of this show. She had a unique background. She was different from the other ones besides Uni and Elena. I mean Uni and um Lala because they were aliens. And I was like, oh my god, we're gonna get something interesting with this. I also thought at the beginning of this show, <laughs> not only was it going to be about <clears throat> stars and planets and everything, the astral and all that, and it felt like you gave me this much, a teeny tiny bit of it, over freaking off. You know the show Asteroid in Love that just started about two weeks ago, maybe almost three? That does it so much better than this show. And I don't understand why. Like, oh my god, it's just like, oh, what did you, I, I mean, like, what were you thinking? That's all I want to know. What were you thinking doing this show? Sitting there, doing the writing. I get that. Let's even talk about, like, the, the freaking budget for this show. And, yes, I get the fact is no matter what, the movies are always going to be, like, top tier budget. You got to think about anything. Let me compare this ish to freaking any other show. Like, um, I cannot pronounce the company's name. The people who, did, who has done Fate EBW. That stuff is top tier. Now go look at the freaking movie for Heaven's Field. That is even more top tier. But they're still equal. You have this. It's still a pretty amazing, gorgeous looking show. Then you get to the movie and the movie looks hell of a, a hell of a more gorgeous. I get with the budget. Yes, you gotta have voice actresses for every single character. You gotta think about them 13 princesses. You know, <laughs> you had to get some possibly some higher freaking paid actresses for this show are really every pretty cure series in its entirety so yes the budget ain't always gonna be top tier and the quality of the show ain't gonna be top tier and sometimes you can see it i ain't gonna say it's no sailor moon crystal up in here but it's still good but it's just like mm, all that money and it goes to something and then there are episodes where you're sitting here and the quality just isn't good as, in, as much as you think it is so i mean yes it's still a good behind show, but there are so many, so many critiques in these. I, I don't even know if I would consider this like one of my favorites. I, I loved it for so many different reasons. But then at the same time, I have a lot more negatives than positives about this show. I mean, it's just, I hope they do better. I, I will say for, you know, the fact is we about to go in like <laughs> less than two weeks. We are about to go into a season where Aoi Yuki is going to rock this fucking show. I think it's going to honestly take this show into a completely different route. How when, um, my God, uh, the person who played Blossom for uh, Heart Catch, even though I was a little, I'm a little iffy on that show, I still enjoyed it for what it was. I don't like it, this is my one little niche because I have, it was more of the art style for it because they're bringing Hugato, the art style of Hugato back into healing. The art style for Hugato was good in the beginning, but then it made it a little harder to look at and then they're bringing it back. So I'm like, uh, but I'm hoping that it could just be like a little bit better. We'll see. I don't know, but just please. There's a new girl in here who kind of gives me feels towards Elena. Because she seems European in a way. She's a lot, um, her skin is a lot lighter or yeah, a lot lighter than the other two. So she has to be either Australian, European, maybe American, something. If I'm right about her, please, for the love of God, make her an amazing character. The things that you couldn't do with Elena, do it with her, please. Because honestly, I will be so fucking pissed. 
Like, dead ass. It, it's just ridiculous. Other than that, guys, that is my reaction view to our episodes 47 and 48 of Star Trek Pretty Kid. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Magic Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys probably not next Sunday. Because, like I said, on Saturday, I am moving. And I probably won't get internet and cable until maybe Monday, Tuesday at the max. So, either between Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, whenever I get power for, you know, internet and cable, this is the next time you'll see me for the finale of this show. And what I am hoping with the finale of this show is that with each one of these girls, you give me something good. Because right now, I got a really bad taste in my mouth because of this show. I think also what we'll do for this last episode, I will talk about voice actresses for each of the five five girls and how I personally felt about them. And if I don't know. If something. That's all. That's all I really got to say. But until then, I will see you guys on next time. Bye. Thank you.